the obvious way to set up a milling machine or a CNC and make sure the head's square and the table's flat is to use a DTI. So uh, nice and simple, you get a plunger, you can just see exactly where that plunger when it gets pushed in or pulls out, how high it is the height of this above the surface and you fix that to an arm and you'd fix that to this head to the actual spindle and turn it around. The trouble is this is rather big compared to the size of this tiny CNC and it's really difficult then to fit this on and do the measurements where you swing it back to front and side to side. It's just too hard. This is this is too too clumsy really a device for this. So we need something else. That's where these two tiny pointers come in. So a straight pointer that I can put into the uh, spindle and measure the height at a number of points across here and uh, a dog leg pointer that I can swing backwards and forwards and effectively measure the uh, flatness uh, of the tip of the spindle compared to the actual table. And, and knowing that allows me to set the, the spindle square to the table. So I want to get that perfectly, when I swing it left to right, I want to get it perfect, the same height above the table as to front to back, and then it will be perfectly square with this table. That, that's my challenge and that's what I'm trying to do. So these two pointers, as I said, the dog leg and the uh, and it's just a straight pointer, are all you need really with some feeler gauges. And the feeler gauges are what you use to set spark plugs, so gaps. So go into any... Uh, car shop, um, spare shop and you can ask for feeler gauges and you'll get a set of um, very thin and they're just very thin sheets of, of uh, metal. Let's put a complete one here somewhere. So this is what it actually, what a feeler gauge will look like. It will have a, a number of different blades of different thicknesses so that you can measure the gap. I just happen to have taken some of those out so I can just use them very simply. But you can use them like this as a set of feeler gauges just put them under the metal and you can judge the distance by just feeling when they get a little bit of a little bit of resistance on them it's a really simple way of working so i'm just getting and setting up this little uh, cnc jimitsu uh, 3018 pro mini machine i'm just trying to get it square and the table flat first of all table flat and what i've got is a little pointer now this is an old carbide cutter that I've ground to a point and then I've rounded the point. I don't want it a sharp point, I want it just a, a rounded point. I'll put that in the tool holder there. That goes in. I want to tighten that up because I don't want it to move. So I'll tighten that up. And now what I'm going to do is, I can't get a DTI under here, so what I've got is I've got some blocks and some feeler gauges. So if I just set that slightly down, and I'll just move this uh, like this, you'll we'll just hear it move. Now like it's moving at 0.1 of a millimetre, we're nearly there. You can just see that gap closing up there. Yeah, like, and it's just touching. So I've got a four thousandths of an inch thick feeler gauge there. They're, sorry they're imperial, but it's just what I have around. And it, you can just feel the point just starting to grab. If I just swap that down now to 0.01 movement, I'll just move it slightly down. I just want to know that I've got a certain feel. It's moving, but it's got a little bit of tension to it. That's it. I can feel that now. I can feel that feeler gauge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it 100 millimeters closer to the camera. So let's move it 100 millimeters closer to the camera. And let's repeat the measurement because then we'll know whether the table in X is flat with respect to the head. Aha, uh -huh. no it's not. It won't go under. So it's going up here slightly. So I've got to, I'm going to slightly lower this table and just let it down. And I do that by undoing these. There's just enough movement in these just to get a little bit of um to get a bit of slack and we'll We'll just move it. And we're probably going to have to play around with this a bit to get this right. So I want that to be just 
just the right sort of tension in there. So let's just pull that up again. Just, that's a bit tight. You feel that there, that's properly tight on there. And that's not the finest adjustment. I'm gonna to have to play around with this a bit, I think, to make this work. But we'll get this so that we just, right, because we're gonna to have to do front to back yet as well, yeah? So this this ain't the easiest. It'd be better actually probably if we just jacked the table up on shims and did it like that. But that's a lot of, uh, that'd be quite a big process turning this thing upside down. So let's just do it like this. We'll get it pretty close. That's, that's pretty close there. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to move my 2,000 feet gauge as well. I'm going to move this now 200 millimeters the other way to about 100 millimeters off center. Here it goes, it's moving down. And I'll repeat the measurement down this end. So we'll get it flat that way, and then I'll go backwards and forth and do it that way. And we'll have a flat table. That's that's what I'm aiming for, to get this, this table tramming Flat so that I don't get a deeper cut at one end than the other. So I've got the table reasonably level in comparison to the height to the tool. It's not perfect because this, this the adjustment on this is fairly shocking, but it's looking pretty good. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to swap this pointer for a dog leg pointer, and I'll show you what this does. So going to change this and pull this pointer out sometimes you have to pull the take the collet right out to get the pointer free here's the so here's a dog leg pointer you can see so it's got a effectively it's a, a, a 1 8 piece of mild steel with a pointer on the end again rounded slightly and then with this roughly 30 millimeter offset on there it doesn't have to be perfect but it needs to have a this be a good strong uh, pointer that's not going to move and then we're just going to put that into here and we'll tighten this one up again tighten it you don't want it to move whilst you're doing the measurements so it's just going to be pointless so let's just set this at the right height so we'll take it up a few millimeters take up 10 won't be too far um, and then we can just come down slightly if I move it down in uh, 0.1s, we'll rapidly get there, I think. You can see that gap closing. It's quite useful just to hold a feeler gauge onto this because you can see the gap close then very rapidly. You are. We're pretty close. So I've got now a feeler gauge that's just got a little bit of tension on it there. Now, if I swing that feeler cut that arm to the back, I'm now measuring effectively over two points. These heights of that should be exactly the same and slightly out. Now, if I put a thinner feeler gauge two thou under that, just fits under. So there's about two thou difference in the angle of the head. So it's pointing slightly uh, up at the front. So it's, so it's slightly laying back, pointing backwards. But, at the moment that's probably not too bad but if i then go side to side what i can do is repeat this measurement the top side is not fitting um oh well can't get it under there at the minute that's right up you can hear it it's just on there there are so again that's a two thou just under there four thou quite a bit of tension and again swing the arm to this side and now I can see whether the head is upright that ain't bad actually that's pretty close actually the head that way that is pretty damn close there's a little bit more tension that side than this side with a fourth hour but it's not not massive just check I can't get the two thou under I can't so I've got probably half a thou difference between one side to the other that's pretty good so I'm going to leave that my table's fairly square and I've squared up the machine 
the, the squaring of the machine is quite difficult because as I said you have to undo bolts and then very carefully move it small amounts 